Hi everyone, it's Mike from Comp3 Interactive and today we're going to take a look at singleton patterns and why they're useful in Unity. So what is a singleton? Well, it's a standardised object oriented programming design pattern, uh, not just a function that's solely native to Unity. Uh, they're used to ensure that there's only ever a single instance of a class active at any given time during a program's runtime, or in this instance, your game's runtime. So why are they actually useful in Unity? Well, if you're like me, you'll often have several manager or controller scripts active in your game to provide functions or global variables accessible throughout different parts of your game. For example, it wouldn't make sense to have two identical score manager instances. So this is where we'd implement a singleton pattern. This will ensure that we only have one score manager active in our game and also allows us to access that score manager's instance from anywhere else in our project. Now it's really easy to do and at the end of the video I'll show you a way to create an inheritable, inheritable, can't even speak, inheritable class to convert any of your scripts or game objects in your game into a singleton. So, with that said, let's jump straight into it. We'll just open Unity up here. As you see, I've got a completely empty project. So, what we'll do first is we'll create a score manager script. And we'll open that up in Visual Studio. And in here, we'll just start with a public integer value for our current score. Now what you may already do is create a reference to your score manager script in your player script, for example. Drag and drop the score manager game object onto your player and increment your score that way. Now that works, but it's also a very messy way to do it and it's very prone to errors. So instead, as you guessed, we're going to make this score manager into a singleton. Now, to do this, we have to check if there's already a score manager active in our game. If there is, we want to remove the second score manager, and if there isn't, then we want to create an instance of one. We'll do this by performing a check-in in the awake method. So we'll add in awake, and then we also want a public static score manager that we'll call instance. Now we'll create this as public static so we can access it from other scripts in our game. So back to the await method. What do we need? Simple if statement. So if our instance is equal to null then we don't already have an instance, so we want to set the instance to this. If I spell instance right, that'll work. There we go. Or else, if instance is not null, we already have an instance active in our game, so we simply want to destroy the game object that this script's attached to. So we can already see this in action. If we jump back over into Unity and we create an empty game object and we call it a score manager. If we drag and drop our score manager script and then if we duplicate our score manager game object, because we have two score manager scripts, that'll trigger the delete on one of the objects or destroy on one of the objects. And when the game plays, we should see we only end up with one score manager in our project view. Like that. You see it disappears there. So we can see that our singleton is already working. So we'll just pop back into Visual Studio and finish up a very basic score manager. So we already have our instance, we have our score and a singleton pattern. And one more thing we can do is add in a public void add score and we'll just increment our score by one and to see this working we'll also be able to 
add a text element. So we'll use Text Mesh Pro and we'll add in a score text. And quickly just create a canvas with our Text Mesh Pro on there. When my computer decides to catch up. You just throw that in the middle, make it a zero. And then in our score manager, attach that like we always do. And now because we have a public method for adding to the score, our score variable doesn't have to be public. So we can't accidentally amend score from outside of our score manager object. So now that we've completed our score manager, we can go ahead and test that all this is working. So we'll create one more script. We'll call it player. Open that up in Visual Studio. And we'll only need a couple of lines to check this is working. In our update, what we'll do, we'll check if input.getKeyDown Code dot space. So if we press the space key, we'll access our score manager. We'll get the instance of our score manager that we've created and we'll call the add score method. So what that should do, it'll jump in, it'll increment our score by one, and then we'll set our score text dot text equal to our score and because that's an integer we'll need that to string so we just jump back over to unity if we play the game we should see no we won't because we haven't created our player yet <laughs> create an empty game object name that player and drag and drop our player script on now if we play the game we don't have a direct link between player and score manager but every time we press space our score increments by one perfect so as you can see this is obviously a very useful design practice to get into using for your games and like i said at the start of the video i'll show you a cool little script that will convert any of your objects into singletons automatically so we'll just quickly create a new script and we'll call this singleton we'll open this up in Visual Studio remove this and remove these now we're going to be using generics for this script which is denoted by the reserved character a capital T now what this will do this will basically allow us to pass any class type in and use this class type so we don't need to write a singleton instance for every type that we want to use it on now we'll make sure that our type is in fact a mono behavior by using the keyword were so we'll add were t and we'll inherit from mono behavior again now we'll create our instance as we did before so we'll create a public static but this time we're going to make sure that our instance is the type of our generic the one that we've passed in so we'll just add t in there and again we'll call it instance and this time we'll make instance a property so we'll have a public get and a private set parameter because we don't want our instance being accidentally overwritten from elsewhere in our project next we'll create a virtual version of our awake method so our singletons awake method overwrites our objects method uh, also virtual methods can't be private so instead of making this one public we'll make this protected so this will be a protected virtual void awake and just like before we'll do a check in here so if instance is equal to null we want 
instance to be equal to. Now we can't use the this keyword like we did previously because this would be a singleton type whatever we've passed. Whereas instance is just the type. So what we're going to have to do, we'll get find objects of type and pass in type of T, which we've already passed in. And just to finish that off, we'll have to cast the object that we find as T. And just like before this time, we can destroy the game object if it already exists. So with this class, this is a reusable class we can inherit from. So what we'll do, we'll go back over into Score Manager. We no longer need our await method and we no longer need our instance. Instead, what we'll do, we'll simply inherit from, instead of mono behavior, singleton and pass in our type of Score Manager. There we should see, we can still access instance of score manager, even though we don't have one inside our score manager class, that's because we're inheriting from singleton, therefore it's inheriting its own instance. And if we pop back over into Unity, we can still see that everything is working like we'd expect. Yep. So one final quick thing that I'm going to show you is sometimes, if not all the time, your manager scripts and your controller scripts, you want those to persist between all the scenes in your game. So you don't have to reload any assets, you don't have to reinitialize your databases. So we'll just create another version of our singleton and we'll call this one singleton don't destroy. And if we open this up, in Visual Studio. What we can do, we can copy our uh, original singletons script all the way up to the class name like this. And the only change that we need to make is when we create our instance, we want to use our don't destroy don't destroy on load and pass in the game object. So we can use this in the exact same way. So pop back over into our score manager and this time instead of just inheriting from singleton, we'll inherit from singleton don't destroy, play our game and what we'll see is a don't destroy on load game object appear and our score manager will be put as a child of that right there. So now if we were to load another scene, this don't destroy on load, as it says, won't be destroyed and you transition over to your second scene without having to reinitialize your score manager scripts. If you've learned something today, then drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. You can also find us over on social media for more bite-sized Unity and C-sharp tips. I've been Mike for Comp3 Interactive and I'll see you again soon.